Jesus. When was the last time they cleaned this place? Hey, look at this. The professor here in the flesh. I just go by Trevor now. Yeah, are you crazy? Of course I know who you are. Do you recognize me? You're Gerald's boy. The man of today was once the boy of yesterday. <laughs> what do you think? Of course, I'd uh, have to go stand out in the sun a little bit longer before I could play a young you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, have I said something wrong? Don't worry, mate. I'm old enough to remember worst. <laughs> oh, thank God. You know, it's like a minefield out there now. I feel like I can't keep up most of the time. You know, last week, I got in trouble for not checking my privilege. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've come a long way. Wow. Let's wait and see if that long way has been forwards or backwards. Eh? Not a lot's changed here. What, in this shithole? Shithole? This place is a comedy institution. It was. Look, I'll be honest with you, Trip. Times are hard. You know, back in the good old days when dads were running this place, well, the only competition there was was you know, a nonce and, and a puppet on TV. But now I'm up against God knows how many TV channels. A three-year-old millionaire on YouTube playing with his action man. Some girl with her comes out on Instagram. Don't get me started on Pornhub. But there just isn't the same audience for live comedy anymore. You seem to be doing all right tonight. Well, well look, I'll be honest with you. I don't feel like your surprise set tonight's going to be much of a secret, to be honest. Mate, I told you to keep this under wraps. Yeah, well, look, I'm sorry, mate, but, you know, every man and his nan's got a phone now. They probably caught you downstairs, you know, buying a pint at the bar. It's just so I can ease the nerves. Yeah, no, of course. Just as long as you promise there won't be any trouble. Not that I think there will be. I'm starting to be able to control it now. It's gotten better. Trust me. Rehab really helped. Oh, yeah. I was rehab. I've heard it's just like prison for the rich. <laughs> it's just a great place to do nothing but think. Bloody hell. Wish I had 10 grand to just splash on thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm, uh, I'm really grateful for all the publicity you're going to give us tonight, good or bad. But um, I don't really feel like we could handle it. Uh, Trust me. I have it under control. Thanks. Look, um, I know most of what the Daily Mail wrote about you were a load of rubbish, but um, can I ask you a question? Do I have a choice? <laughs> that article that they wrote about, um, you know. I can't say I do. The pineapple. Is it true that you like to pay to have I pineapples? I can assure you, me and any fruit have never been intimate in any way. See, I knew it. Smithy owes me a tenner. I said you were more of a watermelon sort of guy. Why would you go and say something like that? <laughs> How's your dad? Yeah, surviving. He remembers who I am most days. I owe him my career. Well, he owes you everything, you know. That night, stuff a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I've got people who still come here wanting to see that night again. You know, people have come to the conclusion after all these years that I came onto the stage naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's the thing about live comedy back then. Yeah. Those kinds of moments were just between you and the stage. Yeah. I know. I feel like it meant a little more, you know. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you know who my biggest fan is? Some kid in Mumbai. Mumbai? I've, I've, I've never even toured there. But he's, he's seen my, my, my shows on phones and, and stand-up specials. Fuck off. No, no, no. He tells me that he can relate to my 
old comedy shows about the black experience because he's a, a Dalit. Uh, uh, like, well, what's, what's that? Is that like a, like a Bollywood nickname? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> they, they, they have this caste system in India. Um, they're known as the untouchables, I think. So they are literally the bottom of society. They're not even allowed to have their shadows cast on an upper caste person. Between okay. you and me, I feel like an untouchable in comedy right now. I'll never forget that night. I think that was when it all turned around for me. Wow, imagine if we did that night again now. We'd have David Lammy knocking on our door. <laughs> you know, um, Dad just sits there, blank face, staring out the window most of the time now, but whenever I mention you, or that night, that's when he comes alive. Yeah. Uh, so, ten minutes okay then, yeah? Well, why not more? <sighs> if I'm being honest with you, mate, I'm just a bit rusty in a room like this. <laughs> Got used to the stadium life, I see. No, no, it's just that I feel a bit overwhelmed, you know? I could imagine. <laughs> but with these stadiums, it's just such a big difference. These, you know, intimate rooms. With the stadiums, you start to see everyone as less of an individual, but more of just a big, big laughter of mess, you know? It, does that does that make sense? Ah, oh, it's the opener. Opener. Yeah, some blackbird who did like five minutes on Russell Howard. Look, between you and me, I've seen some clips, and I don't get the hype really. It just all comes across a bit angry oh. to me. But you know, I keep on getting in trouble for not putting enough women on stage. So you haven't got some. Open Micah opening for me. Hey, look, if she's good enough for Russell Howard. And how did she bag that? What did she do? Do an Edinburgh show about her vagina or catching dick? Hey, look, it's that sort of stuff that got you in trouble. Ah, fooey. She, she should know that the green room is the centre of Banterville. Well, it's like I said to you, though, mate. You know, I can have a joke with you because you're old school. I remember growing up in here and seeing you and the other comics break each other's bullocks every night, but the new generation, they don't like that. It's just safe space this and pronouns that. You know, it's, like I say, it's a, it's a minefield. And comedy, well, it's an old man's land. Eat the punchlines to the comics. Mm, well, the analogy sounded better in my head. Yeah, keep it in your head next time, mate. <laughs> as long as you can keep it in your trousers tonight. Look, I, I know the press have given you a hard time. Nick. You know me. You grew up with me. You know I'll never do something like that. Uh, exactly. That's why I've got you on stage tonight. Even with them. Um... With what? <laughs> it's not it. What they wrote in the papers, that is not how it happened. Ah, uh, Sandra. Sandra? The uh, opener. She says Bouncer's giving her a hard time. Look, I'm, I'm going to have to go deal with this. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no problem. I bet you don't even get nervous anymore. But, uh, just in case you do, just imagine everybody... Naked? I was going to say uh, laughing. You didn't say naked because... Uh, no. So... Figure of speech. Yeah, come on. Figure of speech. Ladies and gentlemen, the final curtain call. 